Test one, two. Test one, two. Hey, Truffles. You know what time it is? That's right. It's time for another songs and stories for hard-hitting times, right? And uh, hopefully we'll see some of your friends here, right? We, we might sing, see, uh, you know, old uh, Rhonda and uh, Al, right? Maybe the, the whole Kokomo Kid gang. You never know, right? <laughs> so let's get on with it. All right. So here we go. And I'm just going to take this right off here and go like this. I'm remembering the days before I went away, way back in the hills of Old Vermont. And the orchard on the hill, I think I see it still, way back in the hills of Old Vermont. For oh, tonight I long to be where the catamaran run free, and the rattlesnake The apple blossoms bloom way back in the hills of Old Vermont. There used to be a barn near the old fishing pond, way back in the hills of Old Vermont. So many fields of hay now gone with yesterday, way back. everybody doing today? This is Rick Polari right here in the hills of Old Vermont and Mariana says it sounds good. Well I'm glad that you're listening. Well uh, you know it's uh, uh, always good to be here. I think that I need it just as much as, as anyone else just to get on and and talk a little bit and share some music and uh, you know this is um, it's been a, a, a little bit, uh, you know, the good news, the, there's good news, good news first. Good news is that the COVID cases here in Vermont are starting to ease down again. So uh, that's good news. And uh, the governor's report today was kind of positive, saying that we just might be able to uh, kind of ease this, this kind of a, uh, way of living back into our life again about being able to do things but we have to take time we have to take time and, and see how it all goes but it's looking better than last week and that's always always good and um now the 
for me personally, it's a little bit of a, a, a kind of a strange, strange time because I, you know anybody who's who's been watching this this live stream weekly show knows that uh, you know I've been having some some you know shoulder problems for a while, and um, I guess the doctor feels the best thing to do is to have some surgery. And so it looks like that that's coming up. And that, I'm scared, you know. I'm going to be real honest with you folks. I'm not, I'm not really happy about having to do this and a little worried about how everything's going to work out. And the fact that, um, you know, it, it's going to slow down my playing ability quite a bit while I'm healing. There, there might be a chance, there might be a chance of um, being able to play uh, the ukulele, but it's going to take a while to get back to playing the banjo or the guitar. And uh, you can imagine, you know, for me, I've been, I've been doing this all my life, every day, playing instruments, sometimes hours on end. And the, the thought of not being able to play for a while kind of makes me sad. Uh, and hoping for the, the, you know, the good outcome and the idea that uh, I should be able to play even better uh, once everything gets healed. And so I guess we're just going to take it one step at a time, one step at a time. But, you know, we're getting old, not, not spring chickens anymore. I'm not a spring chicken. I, you know, uh, which shoulder? My shoulder? It, it is this shoulder here on my left hand. And I left the left side, excuse me. And, uh, yeah, it's, I got hurt in, in a yard accident. Now, there's, a, there's a moral there. Don't do yard work. That's bad for you. <laughs> it could get hurt. And uh, so um, it's been going on since May. Uh, and it's just not getting better. It's, and the, the, the worry is that it might get worse. And that's, that's why I'm having to deal with it. Because I don't want it to get any worse where there, someday I won't be able to play again. That would really be awful. And, you know, it's, it's this whole idea about getting old, you know. I wrote a song. I wrote a song for an old hobo named Roadhog, USA. And, and Roadhog was, uh, he's no, no longer with us. He, he's, when, when in the old hobo logo, uh, lingo, they, they say he, he caught the westbound. And he's up in hobo heaven. Uh, so here's the tip of the hat to you old Roadhog USA. So, you know, he wanted me to write a song about his life, and he told me that he was getting so old that he couldn't, uh, he couldn't ride anymore. He couldn't hop the trains. The only thing that he could do was just watch the trains go by. Uh, and uh, and when, when a hobo kind of disconnects from the road, they call it pulling the pin. I, I didn't know that expression, but he told me it's pulling the pin. It's, it's an old term. You know that the, they used to use in uh, the, like when you disconnect the train, the trains, the the the, the two box cars. Are, you know they have a pin in between, and you have to pull the pin to disconnect the cars. And so when you pull the pin, that means that you disconnect from the road in the hobo lingo. So uh, uh, here's one for it for you. Trying to get that railroad feeling. Pulling the pin, whipping the road, leaving behind stories untold. My life's giving out, so I'm giving in. Adios, dirty place. I'm pulling the pin. My rambling days are over. It's mighty plain to see. There's no place in this old world for an old hobo like me. I'm packing my last bindle down the Gila Monster route. Going home to California, blow the candles out. Pulling the pen, wetting the road, leaving behind stories untold. My life's getting out, so I. When I was a young boy, living by the tracks, I'd hop a roll 
and freight train man. Never did look back. I saw the big rock candy mountain looking out my box car door. Now I'm just an old man, can't hop trains no more. Pulling the pin, wetting the road, leaving behind stories untold. My life's getting out, so I'm getting in. Adios. Dirty face, I'm pulling the pin. Now I'm living by a freight yard. Trains whistle in my ears. I'm looking down those same tracks I rode for 40 years. I smile at the brakeman, wave to the engineer, then curse that mean old railroad boat, laughing through my tears. Pulling the pin. Quitting the road, leaving behind stories untold. My life's getting out, so I'm getting in. Adios, dirty case, I'm pulling the pin. Pulling the pin, quitting the road. Dirty face, I'm pulling the pin. Pulling the pin, pulling the pin. You know, that's, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you, you get uh, these times, there are times in life where you have that, that, that kind of, either it's wanting to, to have more hope and, uh, and combating fear. Fear and hope. I think there's a lot of that going on. We want to have hope, but we have a little bit of fear. And so I thought I'd read you a story that, that kind of talks a little bit about that. Yeah, this is a story from my book here. And it is a story, part of a much longer story, of course, but it is a story. And, you know, folks uh, at home, you know, you can get your own copy of my book if you want. <laughs> this is my book, Banjo Man, Adventures of an American Folk Singer. And uh, you can get it over at my, my website there uh, at uh, Rick Polari. That's R-I-K-P-A-L-I-E-R-I dot -E com. And I will uh, also sign it with a fancy signature. And uh, we have a few other little handmade things that go along with it. It's a really kind of a, try to make it a fun thing to, to connect. And, and I thank all you folks out there. I know there's a lot of you who have supported me by, by uh, getting my book, and I do appreciate it. So this story takes place back when I, I lived in Poland. Mm. Back in, in 19, it was 1985 at that point. And um, I, well, I was going to leave. I had to leave the country. Things were, were changing. There was martial law was going on. There was a lot of craziness going on in Poland at that time. And uh, a lot of people were getting arrested. Uh, and uh, the, the Zomo, or the secret police, were arresting people. Uh, there was a, while I was there, there was a priest, Papa Ushku, who was, was killed by, uh, by the secret police there. And uh, officially, they didn't want to talk about it. You know, nobody wanted to talk about it. And, and then they, they, when the news did come out, they said that they had, you know, just a small, you know, turnout for his funeral, which was not true. Later on, I went over into the city of Kraków, into this church, because the church was one of those places where, you know, especially at that time, that people could speak freely and, and do things, because usually they... they Place. And so in that, uh, in the basement of that church, there was a, a whole exhibit to the funeral. And there were just, just thousands and thousands of people who had attended, people from all over the country. So it was that time when things were locked down and people, you know, solidarity, the union that, that spawned the, the whole idea of, of Poland being free again, uh, the, all, all the officers were arrested and in jail, and you could not even say the word solidarity, you know, in public. 
it, it really was one of those things that, that you, you could not really talk about. Um, hushed tones is, is, is the way that it would be spoken. And of course, being a, an American over in Poland at that time, I was under a lot of scrutiny. Uh, my, um, my letters were opened. Uh, there were lines through different words. Uh, sometimes you'd get it, and it, they, didn't, they didn't play any games. You know, when you'd get that letter, it would be in a plastic bag <laughs> inside the envelope so that you knew that people were reading your mail. Uh, they also searched whether I went to and had to do a TV show. And while I was gone, uh, they came in and searched the whole uh, room that I was staying at. And uh, so they, they um, definitely, let's say, had their eye on people, you know, from foreigners like me. And this was my last show. I, I was leaving, leaving the country. And I, I, there were some uh, shows that were put together in, uh, over in Warsaw. And in, in Poland, we call it Warszawa. Uh, and uh, there, that was going to be my last shows. And then I would get on, on the train and, and, and head, head back home. And so um, that's where we pick up the story. I had, there was a big party, a big party where I lived in Ustebna. And all the musicians were there. And, uh, you know, it was, it was really uh, just one of those, those kind of bittersweet moments. Later that night, all my friends gathered at Edek. Edek was a wonderful friend. My friends, Zbyszek Wałach and Yusuf Kobulach, surprised me when they handed me a special gift. They had worked for months gathering together bits of wood, metal, and leather, and had made a replica of one of the oldest bagpipes in the village. It was gorgeous. It even had a hand-punched metal plate inscribed with their names and the date it was made. I was overwhelmed. After a big meal and a few toasts of vodka, the party was over, and everyone sang their way out the door and up into the mountains. As they disappeared into the snowy hills, I could still hear their voices echoing back, Gronichki, Gronichki, Tenskno mnie za wami, Bo yo wood maluczka, maluczka, na wodzony z wami. A member of Yusuf Brodo's group decided to accompany me to Warsawa. Sashek, a big strapping boy, he was barely about 17, but was strong as an ox. He had always looked out for me and decided that he wanted to make sure that my final shows went well. When we pulled into Warsaw and saw to our surprise a big billboard announcing my performance at the students club, I knew that we were already off to a good start. When we arrived at the university, a young student greeted us. He gave us the information on where we'd be staying and eating. With a great deal of pride, the student told us that we would be their guest and would be well taken care of. He then mentioned a deal that they had worked out with a local restaurant, which meant that all of our meals would be on the house. Then he introduced me to another student who would be taking us to visit an art gather gallery. I couldn't help but notice this young man had a bandage as big as a golf ball covering his right eye. After touring the exhibit, I asked him, hey, what happened to you? At first, he, he just smiled, but then he led me into a quiet hallway and told me his story. I was at a demonstration that was against the socialist, communist, and supporting the outlawed union called Solidarity. The secret police, known as Zomo, came with their rubber hoses and they beat us. My eye was beaten with one of those hoses. He paused before he continued. They want to crush us. They think they can stop us, but they are wrong. 
I might lose this I, but if we win back our freedom and our union, it will be worth it. My own eyes swelled up with tears as I listened to the strength of this young voice. How many times have I stood on a picket line or marched in protests, knowing that the worst that could happen was to be arrested? Here was a young man willing to risk his eye or his very life to gain freedom. I walked away with a new appreciation for Polish willpower and determination. Any time I have a question of my own beliefs, all I have to do is to think back to that young Pole's words. And that was, it, it really did. It was one of those moments where you, you had to look at what was going on around you and think about a people who have stood up, who stood up for, um, for principles and ideas. And, uh, and how important it is about having, you know, democracy and freedom. Uh, I think, you know, when we get scared, you can think of Woody Guthrie. You gotta walk that lonesome valley. You gotta walk if by yourself ain't nobody here can walk it for you you gotta walk it by yourself daniel was a bible hero he was a prophet, brave and true, in a den of hungry lions. He proved what faith can do for you. Help me now. You got a John was a Baptist. Some folks say he was a Jew. But there's one, the Holy, that's it, Bible tells us that he was a preacher too. Now, Bye.
fear. Another song, another old song that we can sing together. Put on my picks over here and uh, probably sang it before, but you know, they say, uh, you know, a good song is worth singing a couple of times. I'm just going to check if anybody's still listening here. Oh, there's a few people here. Okay, that's good. Good to see you folks. All right. And you can, you can sing along with me on this one.
I'll see you next week. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Bye-bye.